Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of the Particle System series. This is episode number three. I'm here down in the right bottom corner, as you can see. And uh, let's uh, get to work. So in the second video, uh, we saw how to add acceleration to our algorithm to move the particles. Now, in this video, we are going to add to the algorithm a way to make the particles attracted to a single point in the three-dimensional three space. So, first of all, let's actually add the GTFPS GUI object here to check our frame rate. You can actually just add it with another bang. Okay, consistent frame of 60 frames per second, that's cool. Uh, let's bring a bit of those objects a bit down. Okay. Now, uh, we could actually set a parameter to set the max velocity. So if we want to reduce the max velocity, we can do it also from outside the patch. And we can do the same for the um, acceleration, but this we will do later. So let's create a param and let's call it max bell. And this is going to be 0. Point, uh, let's say 0. 0.05. So here we can just write minus max bell, and here we can write max bell. So cool. Now they go a bit slower. So if we restart the if we restart the velocity, you can see that in the beginning they are slow, and then they accelerate at every frame. Cool. Now let's add a way uh, for our particles to be attracted from a single point in space. Now. According to vector mathematics, it works like this. So let's say that we have our point of attraction here, and then we got all the particles around this point. Uh, in order to make the particles be attracted to this point, we have to sum to the position of those particles at every frame a vector that goes in the direction of the point of attraction, right? How do we get this vector? It's very simple. We just subtract the, the position uh, uh, of the particles from the position of the attraction point. So basically like this. Attraction point minus particle position. This is equal to the direction vector that we have to sum to the particle's position. Okay? So, I'm not sure. Is this window actually transparent can we see through it not sure so let's create a parameter uh, which will be our point of attraction so let's call it target for example so the target to which the particles have to converge and let's put it in the center of the world now we said we need to subtract the particle position from the point of attraction so we will just do something like that target which is our target minus so this uh, exclamation mark minus means that we subtract uh, from what's inside the object what comes uh, uh, in the input so we basically subtract from target the particle position now we got a vector that goes from each particle so for each particle we get a vector that goes toward the point of attraction okay very well uh, now we need to sum this vector to the actual position of the, to the actual velocity actually of the particles, because this is going to be our new acceleration. So our new acceleration is not anymore uh, just going down. We can still have it that it goes down, but we can also uh, use the, this vector. So vector from particles to target. We can use this vector as our new acceleration of so our new force basically this vector is basically a force that pushes the particles from where they are toward the center toward our target so in order to make it a bit more useful we have to actually uh, multiply by something small otherwise uh, it's going to just be too fast exactly so as you can see if we just connect it like this the particles all go toward the center and then they are here in a crazy crave to go as close as possible to the center so this doesn't really work now we can multiply it though for something small 
and now we can see the particles yeah go toward the center and then they jump back because of the uh, the previous velocity basically so they go toward the center and then they get uh, uh, the inertia force pushes them back again and then they are again attracted from the center now one thing that we can do here is actually to normalize this vector so normalize the vector means that it doesn't matter how long this vector was in the beginning so it doesn't matter how far the particle is actually to the target even if the particle is closer or if the particle is farther if we normalize the vector is always going to have a length of one so we basically it's like if we uh, limit those these vectors to have a strength of one and why do we do that because we don't want the force to be affected by the how far the particle is from the target okay maybe it's something we could want but maybe not so if we don't want it uh, we just need to normalize this vector so it doesn't matter how far the particle is from the target the vector is always going to have a, a strength of one and then once we have all the vectors with the same strength we can actually multiply them as we please so it doesn't depend anymore uh, on how far they are but just on the force that we assign to the uh, to the vector so this is basically our new magnitude of the vector because we multiply before it was one so set magnitude or strength to one and then by here we basically set the magnitude to uh, to what we want basically in this case 0 0.000 and so on let me actually okay if we uh, erase the previous velocity we can see that they are very slowly attracted from the center very very slowly and then they are repelled back because of the inertia force so their previous velocity pushes them back toward the outside of the world so let's see if they then got go back again toward the center they should do that uh you know there's a new cool feature on the ggl mesh which is this uh, point mode let's actually set it to circle depth instead of just instead of just circles because this means that the closer we go to the to the circle the bigger they become so they actually behave like if they are three-dimensional objects this is a feature that is going to be released soon with the ggl mesh so let's actually make this point a bit bigger yes something like this big enough cool okay so cool as you can see they get attracted to from uh, to the center now let's actually let's actually make this uh the starting position three-dimensional instead of uh, instead of having two-dimensional so let's go away from the two-dimensional world and let's get inside the three-dimensional world so once we initialize the position as to be three-dimensional the particles are all scattered around the world in the minus one to one range and then they get all attracted toward the our target point which is the center Let's make the force that attracts them to the center a bit greater, a bit bigger. We can actually create another parameter here. And let's call it attraction strength. And this is just a float number. So it's going to be a single number. And let's set it to something like 0 0.001. So let's, go, let's write this here, attraction strength. Oh, and as you can see, this is pretty, this is a pretty big force so let's make it a bit smaller something like that if we reset the velocity okay cool uh nice now what we could do is to set the target uh continuously moving right so the particles are always attracted uh to the target we can do it in several ways we could connect for example the mouse position to be attached to, to be the target position uh, but uh, this the mouse is only going to move in a two-dimensional world so we maybe want our target to move in a three-dimensional world so let's actually use the jpfg to uh, create the movement uh, for the target so we are going to use the noise created from a jpfg object get rid of those from a jpfg object to set the position of our target in the space in the three-dimensional space so let's do like that let's create a jit.pfg uh, we want three planes because we want three um, a position in a three-dimensional space so every plane is going to be a coordinate 
Flow 32 and then size uh, dimension, let's make 222 two, two, because less than 2 it will not work. And we need a third dimension to set the offset. So I will uh, put it like this. Less than 2 it will not work because this is a bug of the, GL, of the GBFG object. Or I don't know if it's a bug uh, or an intended behavior, but this is just how the object works. So if we do something like this. Let's create a JIT mode time and let's set it to draw to uh, how did I call my world here? Particles. Cool. Now this should give us some numbers. Nice. We can set these as the offset for the third dimension. Then we send a bang. And, uh, oh, of course we have to give it uh, a noise, otherwise it doesn't know what to do. So, basis, let's use the noise simplex, which is one that is very easy to generate, and uh, it's pretty nice. Okay, so now this noise should also go in the negative realm, but just to be sure, let's send it uh, set at basis sign 1, which means this is going to be a signed noise. So we can send this at load bang. Uh, which means every time we start the patch, this is going to set the, exactly uh, the noise to be to go also in the negative direction. Now, uh, before we send it uh, as to the as the target position, let's actually go inside JitGen and let's normalize this uh, this vector because, as we said before, this is now a vector uh, with three components. As we said before, if we normalize, it doesn't matter anymore what, what was the magnitude it had before. Now it's always going to be in the range uh, minus 1 to 1, because the magnitude is always going to be uh, 1. So if we check, for example, with cell block, the numbers before it was normalized... Ah, of course, we need to first get this matrix as a, two, as a 2D matrix. So let's actually do like this, JIT matrix 3 float... 32, we are actually interested in just one cell, so we will just set one cell, okay, with three planes. So as you can see, the number before it was normalized also go uh, up to, to 2, 3, and so on, and once it's normalized, they will never go above 1, even if it's minus or plus, they will never go above 1, but uh, it's not clipped, it's like rescaled, so this is normalization for us. Cool. Uh, after that, we can actually use a JIT Ether to get the, the content of the planes as a list. So there it is. Cool. And now we can assign this as our target position. So this was the param called target. So let's just uh, let me put a bit of this stuff a bit down. Let's say prepend target is going to be the position of our target. Cool. So as you can see, the particles are attracted now to a different position, so to where the particle, is, uh, to where the target is. Let's actually visualize the target uh, by using, for example, a GGL grid shape. So instead of say prepend target, let's say prepend position. Let's create a GGL grid shape. GGL grid shape particles. Uh, let's say scale. 0.1 let's say color let's make it red so we can see it clearly let's make it a bit smaller 03 for example cool and this is going to be our target okay cool as you can see it moves a bit too fast for my taste so let's set the speed of the jitmo object a bit lower so speed 0.3 so this will make the offset go a bit slower which will make the uh, target move a bit slower. Cool, uh, let's now increase maybe the force of attraction, so the attraction strength. Attraction strength, dollar one. Let's increase this so the particles are uh, attracted st more strongly to the object. Okay, cool, this was a bit too much. Okay, this is already starting to be a cool, a cool behavior, right? So let's actually remove the wrap because we don't need it anymore at this point. So let's remove the wrap. Uh, oh, and uh, this makes our particles make a bit cra go a bit crazy. But let's try. Uh, cool. It looks uh, it looks pretty cool. 
if we play a bit around with attraction strength we can obtain interesting effects we can also we can also play a bit uh, with the uh, with the attraction force so basically we can reduce the acceleration coming from the coming from the previous frame a bit every frame in order that this doesn't get just summed with others so let's actually do it and multiply this by 0 0.99 let's make the structure strength a bit bigger okay cool so let's start from scratch okay so basically now that we multiply the previous velocity for 99 it's not go it's going to get a bit slower at every frame uh, because of attrition so it's not going to always increase as in the previous case which could be something that we like could be something that we don't like uh, it's already kind of an interesting behavior but we can uh, improve it by assigning for example a mass to every particle which we're going to do in the next video for the moment let's just play around with what we got here uh, which is it's pretty interesting it's a bit like uh, looks a bit like a swarm although there is no at all any implementation of a swarm algorithm at the moment okay it can be that the particles get a bit too um, get a bit too attached together and create this kind of slime thing uh, if we play around with the strength it's going to look cool or look dull depends depends but this is what we got okay so yeah uh, let's let's stop this tutorial here i know that the depth uh, circle depth uh, you don't have it yet uh, this is going to come up pretty soon and in the meantime you can achieve the same effort using the um, using the billboard shader that comes uh, with uh, the max and the gl3 uh, package for example otherwise you just get the particles without the depth which is also cool okay so let's stop it here as always a very big thank you to all my patreons this is really it's really what keeps me going with the tutorials so thank you really very much if you're not a patron of mine yet uh, you can check out my patreon channel where there are a lot of patches uh, that you can uh, that you can download with a little subscription uh, per month and uh, you can play around with them and learn from them and uh, yeah do what you do what you want with them but not publishing them without crediting me because this i've seen happen a couple of times i'm um, more than a couple of times i've seen my patches around without credits and uh, that's not nice so please if you use my patches remember that they come with a uh, creative commons uh, which explains how they can be used how they cannot be used but I should always be credited as the creator. Uh, okay, so apart from this grimy note, I've also created recently an Instagram account, so Amazing Max stuff on Instagram. If you want to follow it, uh, uh, it'd be pretty cool. I share most of the stuff that I share here on YouTube, but on Instagram, so yeah. Sorry, I'm completely a boomer on these kind of things, but uh, I got this Instagram account, so if you want to follow it, that'd be great. Okay, so let's close it here and thank you very much for following in any case and see you soon in a new video. Ciao.